Welcome to Excel 2010 Business Math video number 7. If you want to download this workbook, it's 135 chapter 00, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're on the sheet functions. We want to look at a couple different built-in functions that will make our life easier. Now I want to scoot over. I see some sheets uh, over this direction, so I'm going to use my arrow to expose more sheets. Alright, so we're on the sheet functions. Well, adding, we've already seen uh, we can use the sum function and we know the keyboard shortcut. It's also the only function that has a keyboard shortcut. So alt equals and that will give us the sum function. Now notice equal sign is still the definition of a formula is that we have the equal sign as the first character in the cell. We just happen to be using one of the built-in functions called sum. It's looking at a range. We saw how cool range functions uh, were a couple videos ago. So if it's guessing right we hit enter. Now average. Now in statistics it's called mean. In regular language it's called average. You add all of these up and divide by the count. right? And that gives you one value you can use and say the average sales are so and so. All right, so how would you uh, do that? Well, what if you knew that the function was called average? Well, you could just type it out like this. So average, oh, look at this. So this is a way you can actually guess, right? There are built, there's, and this is in 2007 and 10, there's a little list. And it tells you over here a description, right? And once you get your list, you can arrow down. And each through each one of these, there's a bunch of different types of averages. But this one says, and it's going off the screen so you can't see it, but returns the Average, arithmetic mean of its arguments, which can be numbers, et cetera, et cetera. So the arithmetic mean is uh, means that you add them all up and divide by the count. So you can either double click or once it's blue, you can hit tab. Now this is called a screen tip. It says number one, number two, number three, separated by commas. Now we only have a single column, but if you had many columns all over the place, you could just load them all into the average and it would calculate the average. I mean, that's pretty profound, right? Because adding all these up, writing the number down, and then counting them, and then doing that division is pretty uh, time consuming. Now, here's another cool thing about functions. If it's a simple function with just an ar one argument, this is called an argument. That number one is called an argument. If it's a simple function, you actually don't have to type the close parentheses. If you hit Enter or Control Enter or Tab, it will put it in for you. I'm going to Control Enter. I'm immediately going to look up here and I can see, oh yeah, it did put it in. If I hit F2, I can see, sure enough, it put it in for me. Those are two examples of uh, 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 functions. Now, here's another cool trick. If you just are doing something on the fly, and in this class we're always going to have to actually make the calculation. But if you're on the phone with someone, and you know you've done some, and they say, "Yeah, but what's the average?" There's something down here. This is called the status bar, and it shows the average, the count, and the sum. Is that totally cool? And watch this. If they say, "What are the first three in our list?" Oh, it totally updates. All right, um, and actually you can right click and uh, choose other functions that you might want to, like numerical count, min, max, stuff like that. Um, now, let's look at this situation right here. We have a car loan. And we'll do this exact calculation in, I think, uh, chapter 10. Um, the math behind it is uh, pretty cool. It's very complicated, though. And in, uh, But anyway, so we have 16,000. We have a monthly rate of a half a percent, 0.5 percent, and in chapters three and four we'll see how to make the conversion between knowing it's a half a percent and 0.5 percent. And how many months till it's due? 60. And you're like, man, I wish I could calculate the monthly payment. So you're smart. You've been using Excel. You're so you're like, I bet you there's a function. So you come up here. This is called the formula bar. We saw the name box in our first video. Uh, we've seen the uh, formula bar right up here that shows us what's in the cell, either the actual typed in data or the formula. And right here is insert function. If you click on this, notice our cell is selected. We click on this, and it brings up the insert function dialog box. Now, 
we can type a description up here. I can already see the function actually is in this list, but that's because I used it recently. Let's just assume you've never used the function before. So we can search and then click Go. So I'm going to type um, monthly payment on loan. And I'm going to type the word loan because this is a loan. And then I'm going to click Go. Now what it gives you is a returns. And you can click on each one of these and read down here. Now all of these functions that it returns are related to finance. And actually we'll see uh, a number of these functions when we get to chapters uh, 9, 10, and 11, I think. But the trick is when you're searching is to read the description here, right? It just so happens that the first one is the one we want, but that doesn't that isn't always the case. It says calculates the payment for a loan based on constant payments and constant interest rate, which which most car loans and home loans are exactly that. So once you find the function you want, you click OK. Now this is called the functions argument dialog box. And it's kind of convenient, especially if you've never used the function before. So what it does is as you click in each one of these or move hit tab to move forward there's a description down here and it tells you what you should be putting in them now in this class uh, yeah we when we get later we'll talk about all these arguments but for us right here for calculating a loan payment we just need the ones in bold so rate it says down here rate is the interest rate per period for the loan for example you six percent divided by four for quarterly payments well we already have, and you can drag the dialog box out of the way, we already have, and we're very careful about this, monthly rate and total number of months. They, that unit has to be in agreement. Again, in chapters 9, 10, 11, we'll talk more about this. So, OK, so we, we have our rate. It's over in the spreadsheet. Well, how do we get it? Well, we can drag this to the side. And if our cursor's flashed and we simply come to the spreadsheet and click. Notice down here it starts to emerge. Up here it starts to emerge. But there it is. It shows you a preview, 0 .005 there. Hit tab. All right, number is the total number of payments for the loan. Oh, OK, we already have that, too. So with the cursor flashing, you click right here. The point here is even if you don't understand the finance part of it, which we'll study later, is how awesome it is that they have a list of these items and a description down here. That really helps us. Now this one will learn the term present value in uh, chapters 10 and 11. Uh, this is a finance term. And if you read all this, it may not make sen much sense. But think about it. What is, if we go out and borrow a car, uh, borrow some money to buy a car, on the day we get the loan, what's the present value of that loan? Well, it's 16000 So I'm going to click there. Now, later in the chapters, we'll see how to use these other ones here. I'm going to click OK. And there it calculates. Now, if you calculated this for the first time and you didn't know about number formatting, you'd be like, what? But we're smart enough. We know it's number formatting. We control 1 to open up the Format Cells dialog box. And if you don't like currency, you know how many decimals or the symbol or anything, you can change it. I'm going to change it to that. Now, the question is, why is it negative? Well, the awesome thing about Excel is they put a lot of hard work into making functions that do all the hard work for you. This function knows that when you make your payment each month, it's painfully coming out of your wallet. So that it knows that it's a negative from your point of view. In chapters 9, 10, and 11, we'll talk all about the financial functions and the point of view and when it's negative and when it's positive. All right, so all we saw is that, man, that was cool. We could search for a function, and we could have the functions argument dialog box help us fill it out. Now, in this class, as we go through you know, the videos, we'll show you uh, all the new functions that we encounter. But when you're out there in the working world, you really do need to have the skill of being able to find something. Now, just out of curiosity, let's do this. Let's say you're in um, an algebra class or uh, something like that. And you're like, man, I need to find the slope. I bet you anything, if you type in slope, sure enough, there's a slope function. And it does exactly what you do in algebra. Or what if you're an accountant? And you're like, oh, depreciation. How do I calculate depreciation? So you type straight line, because that's the name of one type of depreciation, and click go. And you'd have to read through these. No, it's not that one. It's definitely not trend. 
variable to no, it's not that one. And you get down here, it returns the straight line depreciation. Oh, that is so cool. Not only that, but in accounting, you know, double declining balance is hard to calculate. And there's a built-in function for it. So the point is, this rules being able to search for a function. Sometimes in the years ago when I was learning Excel, I'd literally just go through this list and read them and uh, see all the different ones. All right, I'm going to click Cancel. All right, that's a little bit about functions. In our next video coming up, we'll talk about cell references, our last kind of uh, topic in our uh, week one, chapter 00. See you next video.